Hi guys, Jamie here, and uh, thought I'd make a video about using Operator to create an 808 or a 909 style kick. Uh, I saw John mention something about it on the boards and, and thought I'd make a video, try my hand at it. So uh, anyway, uh, what I'll do first, of course, is just go right ahead and put an Operator onto a MIDI track, I think, right? Yes. And right away you could also put in a MIDI clip with some MIDI triggers and duplicate that across four beats exactly where you would think a kick would be and already I have placed a limiter on my masters so that just in case I mess up I don't kill my ears uh, and operator is a really great choice for this uh, the reason why is because uh, operator allows us to use its uh, uh, really interesting routing structure to uh, make each one of the, the oscillators in operator independent and what we will be able to do is to create a kick using each one of these independent oscillators by simulating um, you know the parts of a kick that make a kick sound like a kick uh, and I'll explain each one of those as we go through them okay so the first thing that you want to do is you want to go over to your routing structure click on these colorful boxes here and uh, since we're going to be using each individual oscillator to create a different portion of our kick we're going to choose the one all the way over to the right okay we don't want to use uh, any of these where each one of these is going to be modulating another you know uh, oscillator we don't want to do that okay so choose one all the way over to the right and uh, also for this we're going to be using exclusively fixed um, fixed frequencies okay so if you just go ahead and get those all set up and then uh, mute the B C and D oscillators and we will just keep on adding as we go all right so uh, right away, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at, you know, we're going to go from low to high when it comes to, well, really low to high to lower to highest <laughs> uh, when it comes to the frequency structure. And uh, this one I'm going to uh, provide a little bit of thud, you know, that that uh, that thud that you get from an 808 or 909. So let's uh, start like around 50 hertz and uh, at full blast. And let's see what that sounds like. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to throw a spectrum on here as well so that I can see what's going on. All right, and obviously the envelope is not quite right. And there's a little bit of headroom in here, so I'm going to turn this up internally within operator so that you can hear what's happening. All right. Now, that's pretty good. Now, one of the things that you want to do right off the bat with your lower end is realize that you do not need the click at the beginning because we're going to have a higher pitch and we're going to also have up at the top here we're going to be simulating the 808-909 click with this oscillator up here so what we can do is uh, delay the attack of that particular oscillator by maybe 10 to 15 um, milliseconds like so maybe maybe 13 milliseconds that'll be good and then of course the decay to taste but let's take a listen to this it'll give us a little bit of that uh, that that low end but not the click right and maybe about I don't know maybe maybe a third of a second half of a second to maybe two-thirds of a second that's about right okay sounds pretty good so we'll leave that uh, just as where it is right now and and maybe uh, mess with it a little bit later so now um, activate oscillator B and turn that all the way up as well. Okay, and we get another sine wave, of course. Uh, the first one I forgot to mention is a sine wave as well, right? Now with this one, sounds pretty good because uh, 50 to 100, that's an exact octave. But what I find is that if you if you flat this a little bit, meaning that you... you uh, decrease the, the 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 frequency spread across these two you get a little bit more of a realistic sounding kick believe it or not so if you drop this down to about 92 94 uh listen to what happens ah it's a little bit of a fatter sound and about maybe a third of a second maybe a little bit less is good on that one 
gives a little bit of upper upper end, you know, upper frequency meat at the at the low end. You know what I mean? Okay, so it's a, a maybe ninety five. Yeah, something like that. So a little bit flat, maybe ninety four. You know, experiment with it. Okay, but we'll go with that for the time being. Okay. Um, also, this is where you can get a little bit of your preliminary cl uh, click if you like that 808 click sound by just changing the phase to like 3 or 4%. Listen to what happens if I increase the phase to be off um, the zero crossing. Right, I put it up to 3 or 4% and you get that, that uh, signature click that you get at the 808 or 909. Okay, so you can always get a little bit of initial click from that as well. Now this oscillator right here, uh, the C oscillator, let us use this to create a little bit of that after effect or body of the kick. All right. Um, so what we'll do is we will, first of all, we're not going to be using a sign uh, for this. And we are also going to be going a little bit lower than our initial, uh, uh, than our initial, I guess, low pitch of, of the kick itself. Okay. And what I like to use for this one, if I'm building it using operator, is uh, you know the saw wave uh, it just works really well so what I'm gonna do is of course uh, we're gonna be changing the envelope on this so let's just hear what it sounds like without any envelope uh, changing and also an increasing level right so it's a little bit of a low rumble and the Hertz is probably gonna be a little bit too low but let's okay good and of course this normally would not happen right after let's delay it a little bit and that's about right and let's increase the frequency to about 40 maybe 45 And close the decay. Now, of course, you could change, you can alter the frequency. Forty-two, maybe. So it's a little bit off from the uh, from the overtone series. Forty-three, forty-six, and then the decay. So you get what you do is you get that initial pitch, but you get a drop in the pitch after that would be typical. Give it a little bit of character, right? Just it's dynamic in a way. Maybe 42 is a little bit better. And of course that is a little bit loud. So if you drop it down a little on the level, like to 16, 17, it'll sit perfectly. that okay so that's pretty good right there now uh, the top oscillator uh, we can use this is generally going to be a little bit higher in the frequency so maybe like around 150 170 something like this and this is not going to be so loud either but um, I like to use a square D for this one on up op on uh, operator and that is going to be a little bit loud so what I'm going to do is get the op uh, the envelope really really short uh, this I'm talking like really short like 15 milliseconds on the decay and maybe a few milliseconds on the attack okay so you get that little thump right at the high pitch and take a look at the uh, the yeah there's a lot of nice upper level you know stuff happening with the kick which is where you want it to be good all right at least for an 808 no, no, 909 okay great so that sounds pretty this sounding pretty good so far now what you can do is all right uh you can even give it a little bit more character and have it sit in the mix a little bit better by activating the pitch envelope now uh we don't want the ring to change because the ring has a nice little down um sort of like a like a, a downswing in, in its own pitch so we don't want to de uh, utilize the uh, pitch envelope with this so we're going to deactivate that and also the d which is providing our beater 
um, put it up to 100%. And of course, the, the decay on this means that the oscillators A and B are going to have a major, major decay. So start a little bit l lower and then um, increase it to taste, okay, as we go. So we'll activate this again. And here it is without the pitch envelope. So it sort of sounds a little bit more natural. And of course, you could always increase the decay. to maybe increase a little bit of the body or have a rel relatively short decay and a peak that's a little bit higher or maybe even a little bit lower if you want to emphasize a little bit of the wobble right I usually like to stay around the octave above that sounds more natural for an 808 909 okay so there you go. And then, of course, after that, you can um, EQ it and uh, compress it, whatever you want it to do. But that's a that's pretty much how you would get a typical 808 sound right off the bat. And uh, one of the neat things that you could do about this is set it up as a preset. And then, of course, uh, you could always group this, like, for instance, Control-G, and then you can assign, for instance, the decays or the frequencies or whatever to macros and then just change as you go. Uh, you might even be able to add in, for instance, oh, I don't know, maybe you wanted to add a uh, like an effects rack after it where you'd be able to maybe put a little bit of distortion on the low end or something like this, you know, like if you... Um, uh, use one of those uh, uh, effects racks or something like this. But uh, typically, that's how you would actually build, uh, you know, an 808-909 rack. And, of course, you could always check it by setting this to uh, resampling. Uh, hit record and just see what the waveform looks like. Okay. And swoop in and see that, yes, it looks pretty much like you would expect the kick to look. You know, it lasts about maybe half a beat giving way for the bass or other elements in that frequency range. And there you go. So uh, hopefully this helped. If you ever wanted to just build your own 808-909 uh, using uh, Ableton's operator synth. Okay, there you go. Hope this was a help.